Hello everyone, Hyper here. In this video, I will be trying to predict the ranged DPS meta for the first Mythic Plus season of BFA. From my videos that I've done so far, melee DPS and tanks, ranged are definitely the topic that I'm least knowledgeable about, because as some of you might know, in raids I play melee DPS and then in Mythic Plus I tend to tank, but ranged DPS I don't really play to a very high level. So for this reason, I took the liberty of talking to some players who play the classes that are all range DPS and see what their opinions are, what their feedback was, and how they would rank them going into the next expansion. The same caveat as the other two videos applies here. This ranking and this list that I came up with only applies to the very top end, to those who are trying to push the, the most bleeding edge content, highest keys, fastest times. And if you're just doing your weekly tens or pushing a little bit above that, you can play absolutely any spec and you will be completely fine. When ranking all of these ranged DPS, I actually had way more issues than with the melee and the tank video because I feel like it's a lot more reliant on the team comp that you bring. Some range specs can go from S tier down to tier 1 or maybe even tier 2 based on what other classes or specs are in the group. And that was a very weird thing, so keep in mind that when I list these and I put them in specific tiers, they do change, they can go a tier up or maybe a tier down based on if it's a fortified week or a tyrannical week and maybe they're only really good at single target or very good at AoE but lack some single target. This list overall should give you an impression of where each spec stands. I will be starting at the bottom of the list with tier 3. And here we have the Arcane Mage. First of all, this is a very boring spec, but that doesn't really affect its ranking. It brings basically no utility that the other two specs don't already bring, so that's the party wide intellect buff. And Arcane on its own doesn't really have anything else, it, has, it still has the knock up ability from the talent, but that is a very niche situational ability that you might only use on big packs of like caster mobs, so overall nothing very impactful. Doing AoE damage on Arcane Mage also forces you to stand in melee range. And this as a mage is very dangerous at high keys, especially since the aggro changes. The second class in tier 3 is the Shadow Priest. And this spec was going to be reworked from Legion, but it seems like they just stopped halfway through it. And I really hope to see more changes to this spec going into 8.1 but it really has a limited toolkit for dungeons, even if it does bring the party buff and an AoE stun. It really seems like Shadow Priest is one of those specs similar to like Enhancement Shaman that is really designed to shine in either raiding or some high-end content where the fights take a long amount of time. And even though they try to increase their burst AoE, they still struggle with the same issues as in Legion. And then the third class in tier 3, which might be a surprise to most people, is the Marksman Hunter. After the rework of True Shot and the whole vulnerable mechanic, MM's AoE really suffered. It still brings okay utility and is able to survive, but its damage is highly capped, it doesn't really have good cleave damage, and the, its biggest strength for Marksman Hunter came from True Shot. You were able to have it up very frequently, and during True Shot, your damage was absolutely insane. And into BFA, with the changes to True Shot, this seems to be gone. So the biggest strength of MM Hunter just all of a sudden vanished. Moving up to Tier 2, here the first spec I have is the Demonology Warlock. After the rework, Demo is still very strong, but it does have a little bit more limited utility since it's forced to use Felguard compared to the other two specs. Similar to Arcane Mage, its only real issue is that the other two specs seem better. It brings the AoE stun, but so do the other two. Um, I don't really have anything negative to say about this spec, overall it's solid, and if the numbers are there we might actually see this uh, move up to tier 1 or even tier S if its damage is absolutely ridiculous. And just like the other two specs, it's still fairly tanky and able to survive mechanics. The second class here is the Elemental Shaman. Shaman still places very similar to Legion, it has solid AoE damage and it brings some utility to the group, but its greatest issue is still its survival at high key levels, 
especially with gear locking being a thing now where you can just swap into avoidance gear or defensive trinkets or defensive legendaries. Uh, Elemental Shaman really seems like it will have some more issues than it did before when it comes to high keys. Before we move up to tier 1 and the S tier, I just wanted to mention a few key characteristics that a spec must have for them to excel in Mythic Plus. Because you will probably see this theme throughout the few specs that are remaining that I will mention here in shortly. So first of all, with gear locking being a thing, I really believe that the limiting factor for how high keys people can do will be survivability. So a class can have great damage, but if it's not able to survive at those high keys, because obviously we are gear locked, so you can just swap gear and as right traits whenever you want. The limiting factor will be how good defensive utility they have, so multiple defensive abilities or immunities, what they bring to the group in terms of AoE stuns and AoE slows. Both of those are very important. Single target stuns and single target slows are very limited and are rarely useful in Mythic Plus compared to their AoE counterparts. That being said, moving up to tier 1, the first spec here is the BM Hunter. This spec is very similar to Legion and it has a lot more tools added. The rotation has slightly been improved, which is a nice quality of life change, I suppose, but it brings really good utility through its pets and has good uh, abilities for surviving high damage. So like I mentioned, being able to survive is very important. And if you're able to do good AoE damage on top of it, like the BM Hunter does, that is a big, big bonus. And through its pet, you have various utilities such as slows, uh, you know, you have the, the leech, the bloodlust, there's a few different things that it has. The second spec here is the Affliction Warlock. Affliction AoE has been affected quite a bit, but it still has the tools to do the damage in dungeons. AoE stun is baseline just for like the other two specs, and AoE slow can be talented. And it's still a very tanky ranged class, which makes it very good in Mythic Plus, where you're taking high amounts of damage from time to time, and having tools to be able to survive that is very important. Other than that, Affliction still excels at what it did before, multi-dotting, multiple targets. Even though it's huge AoE, exponential AoE, similar to Living Bomb, has been essentially removed from the game. The third spec in tier 1 is the Balanced Druid, and this is one of those specs that can be either in the S tier or in tier 1, depending on what your group has and on the dungeon type. So for on Tyrannical Weeks, for example, I expect Balanced Druid to be around tier 1, but then on Fortified Weeks, I would probably place it in the S tier. Similar to Legion, Balanced Druid excels at AoE damage and staying alive. Even after the nerf to bear form, Boomkin remains one of the tankier, if not the tankiest range class. And it also brings decent utility through Typhoon and it also has a B-Res that is kind of unique compared to the other ones because it does resurrect you with 100% health rather than just 60. Then moving up to the S tier. The first spec that I will talk about here is the Frost Mage, because similar to Balanced Druid, I really believe that Frost Mage can be placed either in the S tier or down in tier 1. And this mostly depends on what your group comp is. If you already have AoE slows, then Frost Mage will not be as beneficial to your group. So if you're running with a Blood Decay tank, for example, you will probably want to run with a Fire Mage rather than a Frost Mage. But if your tank or if your group lacks AoE slows, then you will probably want to bring a Frost Mage because this is where it really excels at. Frost Mage is one of the few ranged classes or classes in general that are able to permanently keep down a slow and it's I believe 65% in an AoE. And that is especially beneficial at high keys where your tank will be getting absolutely pounded by melee attacks and being able to kite and just kind of dance out of melee range of mobs is extremely important. Frost still excels at basically the same things, which is two target cleave with glacial spike and splitting ice. And they also bring the utility through the 10% intellect buff and still have decent defensive cooldowns. Ice barrier is still one of those things that you just kind of press out of reflex. 
and then Ice Block will save you from all those one-shot mechanics. The second spec here is the Fire Mage, as you might have guessed it. And this is a very cooldown based spec that can really shine if your group plays around it. What do I mean by that? Well, if your tank does a huge pull, your Fire Mage will do absolutely insane amounts of damage through combustion. And then your tank will probably want to do smaller pulls until combustion comes back up. And then again, you can do an absolutely massive pull. And that's really what Fire Mage excels at. If you think back in Legion to dungeons like Lower Karazhan or Eye of Ashara or anything where you were able to do massive pulls, the Fire Mage really excelled at that. Um, Fire Mage still has the immunity and the cheat death mechanic that is very useful and beneficial in Mythic Plus. And for AoE, they have really good damage, like I mentioned, through their cooldowns, as well as for single target. Even though for Fire, you have a lot of AoE talents, your single target damage doesn't suffer too much if you choose to go and move towards a more AoE oriented build. And then the third spec in the S tier is the Destruction Warlock. What Destro really excels at is that it has short cooldowns that is very beneficial in Mythic Plus, where you're able to pop a cooldown for either every big pack or every other pack similar to kind of fire mage um or like we saw in legion with windwalker monks and sub rogues having a short cd is very beneficial they also bring the three second aoe stun they have great survivability through being able to sacrifice their pet and also still having their default dr baseline ability that they had before and their toolkit is really suited for both AoE and single target damage. That is extremely important. Similar to Frost Mage, Death Roll Warlock still kind of excels at two target cleave, but it can really bring the damage when, it, when you have much bigger pulls than that. Thank you so much for watching this video. And like I mentioned at the beginning, range DPS is the topic that I'm least familiar with. So if you have any input, I would love to hear it in the comment section. Also, if you think I misplaced some of the specs, if they deserve to be in a higher tier or in a lower tier, also let me know in the comments. Again, if you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and sub to the channel. And if you'd like to support it directly, you can check out my Patreon, which is linked in the description box. Thanks for watching and I will see you on the next one.